Is your Onan generator in need of a new fuel pump and fuel filter? If so, I'll show you how to change it right now. I just want to point out this is a complete step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to replace the fuel pump and filter on your own and generator, giving you the confidence to do it yourself and save money. This is something we do every 100 hours or so. It costs about $50 and it's complete peace of mind. If this video inspires you to do yours, make sure you stick around to the end because putting it back together isn't always the reverse of taking it apart. Please go ahead and subscribe because there's lots more videos like this in the making. Okay, so before we start, there's a couple of things we need to do, apart from stroking the cat, like chocking the wheels and disconnecting the battery. Turning the house off is not good enough. We need to actually disconnect the house battery itself. I've put the RV up on blocks uh, just to give it a bit more height so I can fit underneath. And I've also chocked it front and rear just for safety. Next, you need to find your house battery and disconnect it. So, just to recap, wheels are chocked, battery's disconnected. First job, underneath the RV. The area that we're interested in is just here. You can see the filter and the fuel line. So this is the fuel line coming in to the filter. We're not gonna take it off through here, we're gonna take it off inside the generator, but we do need to release and take off the fuel line. So. The first thing we're going to do is clamp the line. Now don't worry if you don't have a set of clamps, you can just use a simple pair of vice grips. But if you do do that, make sure you put some rag or some tape or something around the hose so you don't damage it with the vice grips. All we're going to do now is just uh, undo the hose clamp. Now bear in mind there will be some residual fuel left in here from what's inside the generator. So just be careful when you pull it off, but just gently go ahead and just um, give it a wiggle and the line will come off. And we just have a little bit of fuel and we're good. Okay, so now we've got the front cover off. We can, first thing is I personally check, make sure the battery is actually off, is to try and start the generator. As you can see, there's nothing coming through. So that means it's definitely off. So now we have to get access in here, in this space here. So we'll just start taking things apart. This wire can come round out the way. Then we need a half inch for taking off this off the sun now. What some people, so I see some people do is they just grab the wrench and just go yanking on stuff. <coughs> just be careful. This, these parts in here are not that strong. So just hold the solenoid, just give it a little bit of love and it will come loose. There's no need to be too violent. Now the reason we're taking this off is because we need to get the control unit out in order to get to the fuel pump. So basically we're just gonna pull the main wire off and we're gonna take it out the back. The same with this one. We're just gonna take it out of the way through the little hole in the side. I'll show you that in a minute, whereabouts it is. Just get it out, just get it out of the way. There's one wire on there just remember that that goes on there. And then now you're going to need your Torx bit. So you've got a T30, which is this one here. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, loosen that off. It's a very small space to work in if you've got big hands. So there's only, on the solenoid you'll notice, there's only one nut. The other side is on a little hook, just there if you can see it. It just hooks on the back and nuts on the front. Okay, so now that's out of the way. Then we can go ahead and take these two off here. Again, Torx 30. It doesn't really matter what order you do this in. You could have done these first or that first. Makes no difference. Then what we want to be careful of is we don't pull too hard on this because there's lots of wires connected to it. 
and we don't want to put accidentally pull anything off. So just be very, very gentle, just lifting it up, okay, and we have to try and squeeze it out of this hole. But again, don't pull it. If it's resisting, check where it's resisting. Don't just yank on it. Okay, and just gingerly lay it down. And now you can see we've got access inside. Okay, so now we've got nice access to the pump and the filter. There's only one 30TX bit to undo, right at the back here. I'll try and, uh, I'll try and show you where it is, just down there, just the one. Once we get that off, it will pop out. It's a bit tricky to get to. Once you crack it open, you can do the rest freehand. Right, if you think it's fiddly to get it out, wait until you've got to put it back in. Now you can just reach in, pull the pump out with the filter, and there it is. So you've got two wires connected to it, obviously a live and an earth. The live is just on a spade terminal, so we're just going to go ahead and disconnect it. The earth obviously goes down to the chassis. The one that they supply doesn't have a large enough ring terminal to fit on to the bolt. So what, they, what you do is you just connect it to the chassis of the fuel pump. We can go ahead and finish undoing the rest of this hose clamp and we can just gently pull that off, just being careful of fuel. We've got the new pump and the new filter ready to be mated together. And there's a cap in there, a bung, which you need to take out. But before you go ahead and put this in, we need to put some gasket dressing on here. Make sure it's fuel resistant, okay? You, if, you can get, if you've got a high Lamar, that's great. This is an equivalent to high Lamar, which is just as good nearly. So all we're gonna do is just put a piece on the end. Doesn't have to go crazy, but just a little bit on the thread. Now you're going to feel resistance quite early while you're doing this up. This is where you need your two 19 mil, uh, 9 sixteenth wrenches, spanners. Spanner, I'm saying it again. Spanners, I'm English. <laughs> so obviously we'll hold one and turn the other. Now you don't want to go crazy with this. You just want it done up enough that it's sealed. Okay, I know I'm doing this on my knee, you could prepare this beforehand, which might be a smart thing to do, but I'm trying to do everything in front of you so you can see that it can be done. And we'll go ahead and we'll put it in, first of all. Go and do that up. Not too tight to start with because you might need to turn it as it's going in. So just give it a little bit of freedom. Then, you can see the from underneath, remember we saw the oval shaped grommet. We're aiming to poke this through the grommet. So now you can just go ahead and just gently line that up, push it in through the hole, and now you've got to line your right hand one part of your fuel pump, which is basically this one, on a little hook, okay? There's a hook there, and this just kind of goes into it. It's a bit tricky to do. Once you're in, you're good. So, two wires to put on, remember. The earth is gonna go on the chassis of the fuel pump, not the original earth. And then the live can just be connected up like so. So this is the tricky bit. This, I probably have to take my gloves off for, or at least a glove, because if I drop this, I'm fishing it out. So I'm gonna put it in through my um, earth cable first. So just make sure you hold the wire while you're tightening it up. 
you don't want to end up with the wire getting screwed around like so and again with this you don't have to go crazy just nip it up it's not really going going anywhere it's just gently and you're good all right so now you've got that in don't forget to tighten up the hose clamp okay again not too tight just check the wiring's not going to get fouled up. Now before you put this in, you see this hook here? There's a groove in the bottom of the uh, generator box. And ideally it needs to go in that groove to stop it rattling. So that's the most important bit. Oh, I'll tell you what we can do. We can give it a little clean before we put it in. Okay. And then just nice and gently, without giving it any resistance just nice and gently hook it down right so now we're in let's just move that out of the way for a minute and we can see that we've got a, a bolt lined up so let's grab a bolt and get it in just to hold it in place while we find the other hole so next we're going to get the solenoid in position Remember that wire that was on there, so just pop it back on if it fell off. It's got one hook and one bolt. So make sure the hook goes in. Just at the back there. I'll try and show you like so, okay? Hook it in like that. And again, got to try and get this nut, uh, this bolt, sorry, look at me. <laughs> this bolt in this tiny little space here. Barely big enough to get your hand in. And there we go. Just nip it up. Now you can go ahead and feed your cables back through. Careful not to poke the grommet out because if you poke the grommet through, it's very difficult to get back in again with the wires in. So just take your time and be gentle. I know I keep saying take your time, but you know, I don't want you to take all day doing it. Okay, so success number one. The next one's relatively easy. You can see through here anyway. It's the big red live. So we'll pop that on. Take our nut. Now, same when we undid it. Don't do it up too tight. It's got a barbed uh, washer on. It just needs a little nip. What you don't want to be doing is going too mad on this because you'll break it inside and you probably won't see it. This is why... Not always, but why a lot of these fail, because they get over tightened and they break inside. So it just needs a, just a little, just a little kiss. Okay, next thing, pop that back the right way round. <laughs> okay, make sure it clicks in. We can tuck that all the way down the back there, out of the way. So now we'll go back underneath and connect up the fuel line. When you put it on, make sure it goes all the way down the barbs. Obviously holding it while you tighten it up. Don't over tighten it. Be surprised how many people I see over tightening hose clamps. Just do it up until you feel some decent amount of resistance and you're good. That's plenty. Then you can go ahead and release your pipe. Just check that it's not flattened out. Right, it's all back together. We've connected the battery. We're almost ready to start it. What I like to do is hold the prime button to start the fuel pump going, check for leaks. So you can hear the pump running. The good thing to do now is have a look inside the cavity where we were working, go underneath and check the fuel line. Once you've checked the fuel and you're happy everything's okay, you can go ahead and fire it up. Well done. Okay, I hope that was helpful. If so, give us a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe for more RV know-how.